All right, so you just finished your stage two exam, and now you're moving on to the stage three modules. You get to the module about flight computers, and well, the flight computer they teach you with isn't the one that you're issued. So today we'll be doing a little tutorial about how to use that. So we'll use it, start, with, start this by doing an example problem, and we'll try to kind of go the concepts as we, as we go along. So if you want to go to your Jefferson Private Pilot Test Guide, go to problem 854, and the problem reads, what is the estimated time en route from Mercer County Regional Airport to Minnow International? International? The wind is from 330 at 25 knots. And the true airspeed is 100 knots. Add three and a half minutes for a departure and climb out. So we would go to figure 21 in the back of the book, which looks like this. Oop. Looks like this. And we would need, first of all, we need to find our true course. Now I have taken the liberty and gone ahead of and drawn everything I need to draw ahead of time just to expedite things a little bit. And basically, you draw a line from point A to point B, take your plotter, and you just line it up, find your true course. And in this case, it ends up being around, your true course ends up being around 0, 1, 2. So we'll go back to our problem. And we'll, we'll let's write down what we're given. Let's set that aside for now. Let's set us, put our givens. So we have our true airspeed, also known as TAS. We have our, now we have our true course, and we know what our wind is, and we have 100 knots, and then 0, 1, 2 degrees, and our wind is 330 at 25 knots. So now we need to find the horizontal and vertical components of our wind. So what we're going to do is, we're going to use this side of the flight computer. To do this, so notice how we have a TAS and TC here. This stands for true airspeed and true course. Well, we have both of those. So we just take our, take our measurements that we, get, that we found. We have 100, 100, air, 100 knots for our true airspeed. And then 0, 1, 2 for our true course. So it'll end up looking like that. And now we need to find our wind components. And to do that, use these rings. Now each of these rings is 10 knots. And as you can see from around, we have full 360 degrees. So you find 330 right here. And then you go down to this one ring, two ring, two and a half rings, 25 knots. And then we see we have our horizontal, our horizontal component here and then our vertical component here. And when you look at it, you see that we have a headwind of about 18 knots and a crosswind of about 16. So we'll write those down. Headwind, 18 knots, and crosswind of 16 knots. Oops. Now, next we need to find our wind correction angle to find our magnetic heading. We don't have any uh, isogonic lines on figure 21, so we don't need to worry about magnetic variation. In this case, if you had isogonic lines, you'd have to so subtract east, add west. So we saw that our crosswind was 16 knots from the east based on this because it's on the left side. And now we go to these rings out here. And so you notice how we have, you use your wind speed up here. So 16 knots, which ends up being right out here. And then you see what angle that associates with on the blue ring. In this case, it's about, we'll call it nine degrees. So we have a wind correction angle or crab angle of nine degrees to the east. So now let's put that all together for our ground speed and our magnetic heading. So for our ground speed, ground speed is simply true air speed minus headwind. So in this case, 100, minus 18, that equals 82 knots. And now for our magnetic heading, what you do is you take your wind correction angle, and in this case you subtract it from your true course. So 12 minus nine equals 003 as our magnetic heading. Now we also need to, we're looking for the time from point A to point B from Mercer to Minnow. To do that, you go back to our figure, and we, we've, already drawn, we've already drawn our line from point A, to, point A to point B. 
And do that, you just have to measure out, see how long this distance is using your plotter. And then these, unfortunately, these charts aren't to scale, so you're going to have to find a way to scale it out. In this case, on this side of the plotter, 35 nautical miles ends up equaling 20 nautical miles. And for a total length of 103 nautical miles on the plotter, you do the math that you end up with a total distance of around 59 nautical, 58, 59 nautical miles. So we'll assume 59 nautical miles and we have a ground speed. This, now this just turns into a simple distance equals rate times time problem. So distance equals rate times time. Distance is 59 nautical miles, which is equal to 82 knots times time. Now, this will teach us how to use division on our, on our flight computer. So we're gonna go to this side now, and basically the way this works is, outer, blue, outer white ring is your numerator, inner blue is your denominator. So, go to 59 on the top, and 82 on the bottom, so it ends up looking like that. And for your answer, you're gonna find this 10 with the circle, not to be mistaken with this one hour uh, it's pointer triangle, and this is your answer. And you see, it, it says it's just over se just says just over seventy. You kind of have to use common sense. Say fifty nine divided by eighty two. It's got your answer is going to be less than one, so your answer ends up being point se point seven two time equals point seven two hours seventy two or point seven two times sixty zero 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 twelve carry the one get 43.2 minutes. Now, we have answer A on this question is 44 minutes. So you say, oh, 44, but don't forget, you have to have the climb out. So 43 plus 43.2 plus 3.5 equals 47 minutes, which is about 48. It's not, this isn't gonna be perfect because, you know, human error. You get 47 minutes, which is about 48, and the answer is indeed B. That's how you saw, use the majority of the tools on your flight computer. Now, one more thing, Dens define density altitude. To define density altitude, you use this window right here. It says, I mean, it says density altitude. So you have to have your pressure altitude and your ambient temperature in Celsius. Well, I guess you could have it in Fahrenheit you could convert, but it's just easier. So let's say we have, we're at, 7,500 7, feet and it's five degrees Celsius outside. So you use this bottom window here and you, uh, you line up to the seven because all of these numbers, these are all in thousands. So 60 is actually 60,000. So we go to 75, seven. So it's somewhere in this range. And then you have to line up this bottom temperature and you match up five degrees Celsius with 7,500. So what I like to do is I like to line up the zero with my first value. So 6,000, 7,000, 75, and then I roll it back, positive five. And this right here, oh, this right here is your density altitude. And that density altitude is just under 8,000. We we'll call it 78, 79, 79, 7,800, 7,900. That's about it. Share to save a life.